So hi everyone and welcome back once again to another class of PIB 247. My name is Manish Mishra and I'm your mentor for RBI Sabian Nabad examination. So in today's class, we'll be talking about the PIB news from 25th to 26th of August 2023 and today some, there are various important news. So uh, listen to the class very carefully and Nabad people do not wait for the notification. Notification ne to aana hai, to aayega hi aayega. So you guys just do not waste your time and focus on your preparation. This duration will make the difference between those who will clear the exam and between those who will not. So please make the use, uh, you know, is time ko bahut achhe se istemal karo and uh, just focus on your studies. All right. So let's talk about the very first question of today, which is about the very important scheme of the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region, that is PM Divine. So the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region has issued, has recently issued revised guidelines for PM Divine. And of course, we all know PM Divine stands for Prime Minister's Development Initiative for Northeastern Region, which was announced in Union Budget 22-23. Those are Union Budget mein isko announced kiya gaya tha. And guys, I beg your pardon for my very poor handwriting uh, today because uh, mere haath mein muscle tear hua hai, so I am unable to write properly. So please adjust it for today. All right, the scheme aims to uh, bolster infrastructure and special projects for the northeastern region. It was launched in Dash with an outlay of Dash for a period of Dash. Right, so you guys have to fill the gap. So let's talk about uh, in brief about PM Divine. What is that? And then we will come to the then we'll go to the uh, you know the revised guidelines and then we will come back to the question. So PM Divine, as the name says, it is the Prime Minister Development Initiative for Northeastern Region. So basically, it must be for the development of the region. The objective is to bolster infrastructure and special projects in the northeastern region and not only infrastructure and social project, but it also focuses on bridging the sectoral gaps, right? Bridging the sectoral gaps and also generates livelihood opportunities for all the youth and women. It was launched last year and it was announced in the budget 22-23. It covers all the northeastern state, the eight northeastern states, which are Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, Sikkim and Tripura. The total outlay of the scheme is 6600 crore and it will be implemented starting from the previous financial year and it will end uh, in the financial year 2026. And for the last year, initial allocation was 1500 crore under this particular scheme. Now talking about the revised guidelines, kya kya revised guidelines I hai. Actually, these are not the revised guidelines or is no changes kare nahi hai, but hai, they are calling it as a revised guideline. So we will be calling it as revised guidelines again. So the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region. This ministry will be the nodal agency for spearheading the project selection, approval and monitoring in collaboration with the state governments, Northeastern Council, other relevant central ministries and in case the private organizations needed. It will be executed through NEC, Northeastern Council or Central Ministries or agencies. And the ministry will provide the overall roadmap for effective implementation of the scheme encompassing the project identification, selection, preparation of DPRs, etc. Talking more about it, the competent authority to pata chali gaya hoga, minister in the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region. Along with it, an empowered interministerial committee will be established, right? Empowered interministerial committee will be established, which will comprise representatives from pertinent line ministries. Like for example, if there is a road that has, that has to be constructed under PM Divine, then of course there must be the involvement of Ministry of Road, Transport and Highway, right? Like for example, if uh, you know any kind of electricity work has to be done in any particular area under PM Divine, then obviously Ministry of Power shall be roped in. Okay? So these are the pertinent line ministries, uh, Northeastern Council and other stakeholders. State level empowered committees will also be established that shall be led by Chief Secretary of that particular state for which the state level empowered committee has been established or will be established. Uh, this committee will include finance and relevant secretaries from state government departments again for the same reason because uh, it is for the overall development of the northeastern region. So that's why, uh, you know, people, the representatives from various departments shall be required. And additionally, the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region will be represented along with external experts from the reputable institutions. Now you guys can see in here, the guidelines, these are the very 
जेनेरिक गाइडलाइंस राइट नाउ टुमारो लेट्स से कि अगर उन्होंने ये क्वेश्चन पूछ लिया दैट हु विल लेट द स्टेट लेवल एम्पावर्ड कमिटी अंडर द a pm divine then that will i will say that will be very unfortunate for all of us and also for the organization which will be asking this question theek okay? hai because this question has no base at all periodic inspections will be conducted for projects exceeding rupees 100 crore this can be asked in your exam at defined milestone of 25% 50% 75% and 100% and around 1% of the approved outlay of the total outlay shall be borne shall be used for administrative expenses All right, so that is all about the guidelines. And now let's come back to the question. Uh, it was launched in two thousand and twenty-two with an outlay of sixty-six hundred crores, and it will be implemented from twenty-two twenty-three to twenty-five twenty-six. Option C is the right answer. I hope this is clear. Let's talk about question number two. Very very important question. ये आपके एग्जाम में definitely आने वाला है. Consider it as a you know leaked question. Already leaked हो गया है question. Which state has become the very first state in the India to operationalize Aishman Bharat Digital Mission Microsites under the 100 Microsites project? Few weeks back, we have discussed the 100 Microsites project when it was launched by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, and today when we are talking about it, the Mizoram has become the very first state in the country to operationalize ABDM Microsite in its capital city as all under 100 Microsites project. Don't worry, we will be talking again about 100 Microsites project. एंड माइक्रोसाइट क्या है इसके बारे में पढ़ेंगे रिमेंबर इन दिस माइक्रोसाइट ऑल हेल्थ केयर फैसिलिटीज इंक्लूडिंग प्राइवेट क्लिनिक्स स्मॉल हॉस्पिटल एंड लैब्स इन द एजॉल रीजन विल बी मेड एबीडीएम इनेबल एबीडीएम इज आयुष्मान भारत डिजिटल मिशन आई होप यू ऑल नो दिस इट विल ऑल्सो ऑफर डिजिटल हेल्थ सर्विसेज टू द पेशेंट ठीक है नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट वॉट एक्चुअली द माइक्रोसाइट द एबीडीएम माइक्रोसाइट आर रिमेंबर दीज आर डिफाइंड एज द जोग्राफिकल रीजन Let's say this is the geographical reason. Like for example, as all the example, let's say as all all the uh, private clinics, all the small hospitals, or the testing labs, right? Shall shall be included in this region, and in and this region will help the Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission for digitizing for digitization of all the health records of the patient. And this site, this region is known as what ABDM. A B D M microsites. All right. So I hope uh, you understood the meaning of A B D M microsites. So these are the defined geographical region where focused outreach efforts are being made to onboard small and medium scale private healthcare providers. All right. It will enable all the patient to link the health records generated at these facilities with the Aishman Bharat digital uh, Aishman Bharat health accounts, Abha accounts, right? And these will be able to view and share these records using any ABDM enabled PHR personal health record application on their phones. ठीक है जी and of course uh, ये इसलिए हमने किया है ताकि you know it is very difficult to open all the small clinics under you know an umbrella scheme. So we need you know certain uh, uh, sub schemes or you know what you call it sub initiatives for reaching the grassroots level for uh, achieving the goals of Aishman Bharat Digital Mission. ठीक है बिकॉज अगर आयुष्मान भारत डिजिटल मिशन के अम्बेला के अंदर सब कुछ करने लगेंगे तो वी माइट नॉट बी एबल टू रीच द ग्रास रूट लेवल सो वी नीड टू ब्रेक इट डाउन इन टू सब इनिशिएटिव लाइक एबीडीएम माइक्रोसाइट ओनली देन वील बी एबल टू इफेक्टिवली अचीव द गोल ऑफ द आयुष्मान भारत डिजिटल मिशन राइट नाउ हंड्रेड माइक्रोसाइट प्रोजेक्ट अभी लॉन्च हुआ था फ्यू वीक्स बैच टू एस्टेब्लिश अ स्मॉल इको सिस्टम विद इन पर्टिकुलर जोग्राफिक एरिया वेयर देर इज कंप्लीट एबीडीएम एडोप्शन An entire journey of the patient is digitized. These will be established across the country in various states and UTs. And within all these micro sites, all health facilities and healthcare professionals will be registered in ABDM modules and ABDM enabled application, whether it is a private healthcare professional or a public. ठीक है सारे included होंगे इसमें. It will be implemented by state mission directors of ABDM. But remember, the National Health Authority will provide. the financial resources and overall guidance right and along with it uh, the implementing state or the ut can leverage a uh, development partner and other interfacing agency for setting up and running the micro site types of facilities jo ki milti hain under a micro site is private facilities such as stand alone clinics poly clinics nursing homes small hospitals labs pharmacies etc jo ki maine aapko already bata diya that is the meaning of 
a micro site and health facilities and health professionals from all the systems of medicine. And last but not the least, there are two categories of a micro site. Category A micro site, which consists of at least 1000 health facilities. And of course, their health facilities not only mean the hospitals or the clinics, but also uh, the, the nursing homes, the testing labs, the pharmacies, right? And category B micro sites are those which consist of at least 500 facilities, but not more than 1000 facilities. Okay, so that is all guys about it and now the correct answer we all know is Mizoram. Option A is the right answer. And now let's talk about another news for which I haven't made any MCQ because I believe that this uh, can be used in, the, in your descriptive part if there would be any thing where you, uh, where you, you know, where you want to write about education. So you can write about it, right? So what is it actually? It is National Curriculum Framework for School Education that has been released now and this framework has been designed for 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 design of schooling as it was proposed in the uh, National Education Policy 2020. This framework consists of all the four stages of school education that is foundational, preparatory, middle and secondary. And there are five parts of this particular curriculum framework. Let's talk about them one by one. Part A. What is Part A? Part A consists of broad aims of school education and desirable values and dispositions capacities and skills and knowledge. It lays down the principles and approaches that shall be followed for content selection, for content selection, for pedagogy and assessment of four stages of the schooling. Jo bhi humne part. Right. Part B. Now, guys, you don't have to, you know, remember all these parts one by one. Just listen to it very carefully that what actually they are doing and uh, what actually all parts are telling us. That's it. Part B focuses on some of the important themes of this framework like rootedness in India, education for values, environment, inclusive education and use of educational technology. All right. Part C has the separate chapter for every school subject which have learning standards defined for all the relevant stages of schooling. All right. And relevant stages, I already told you there are four. Part D handles school culture. Right. It, it talks about school culture and processes that enables a positive learning environment around the children's mind. And last part E outlines the requirement for overall ecosystem of schooling that would enable achievement uh, that would enable the achievement of the aims of this particular framework. Okay? Because of course, when we have a framework, we need an overall ecosystem for its effective implementation. And part E talks about the same. Okay. <clears throat> So that is all about it. And now let's talk about the questions in short. But before that, if you want to have the PDF of this class, you can join the telegram channel. The link is provided in the description. And if you want to ask anything related to examination, you can follow me here. Question number three, very important. What is the name of the first indigenous e-tractor that has been developed by CSIR Simeri? That is Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute located in Durgapur. The name of the tractor is Prima ET11 and it is the very first indigenous e-tractor, right? Prima ET11. NHBC Limited, which is India's premier hydropower company, has signed an MOU with rights, which is a mini Ratna schedule CPSU under the Ministry of Railways for construction of railway siding for NHBC's 2880 megawatt Dibang multipurpose project. Where is this project located? This project Dibang is a place located in uh, Arunachal Pradesh and Dibang actually is a river, not a place. So option D is the right answer, Arunachal Pradesh. Round table discussion on bankability of Samitwa record of rights was recently held at Bankers Institute of Rural Development, which in short is known as BIRD. Nabad people, this is very important for you. Where is BIRD located? BIRD is located in Lucknow, the capital of Uttar Pradesh, as you all know. IREDA, which is the Mini Ratna Category 1 under the administrative control of Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, headed by Rajkumar Singh, who is also the Minister of Power, has signed MOU with government. As for this MOU, IREDA has set a revenue target for 23-24 at what? So it has set the revenue target of 4350 crore for this financial year, that is 23-24. Which country has recently hosted the 20th ASEAN India Economic Ministers Meeting? With main agenda of timely review of ASEAN India trade in goods agreement, which was signed in the year 2009. 
The country in question, guys, is Indonesia. Option E is the right answer. Now, this is an important question. With which organization has the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region has signed an MOU for technical support on fast tracking progress on the SDGs, capacity building, support to aspirational districts, and deployment of emerging technologies in governance and in scaling up good practices. Right. So the organization in question, guys, is UNDP, which is which is headquartered in New York City. Option B is the right answer. With which country has India signed an MOU to enhance maritime cooperation? Very important question. It is Philippines. Capital is Manila. Option A is the right answer. And can you tell me which international organization or regional organization had headquarters in Manila? Write down in the comment section. Let's see who can answer this. Bharat Internet Utsav successfully uh, concluded with overwhelming participation showcasing transformative power of internet. Which ministry had organized it? Bharat Internet Utsav, guys, is an initiative of the Ministry of Communications. So option C is the right answer. And the last question for today, but not the least, government has approved continuation of the schemes of Northeastern Council for the period starting from what? With the total outlay of what? The total outlay is 3202.7 crores and the period is 2022-2023-25-26. So the correct answer will be option E. Option E will be the right answer, guys. All right, so that is all for today. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. And uh, if you guys have any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next class on Wednesday. Goodbye, take care, and God bless.